Welcome to Ms. Miles' second period. And my why question is, why kill someone that can change the world? So before I start, I have a quick little video to you know, get you guys started out. Food. At eight weeks, she's perfectly formed. She sucks her thumb, and she already has 20 milk teeth buds. In another two weeks, she would have had fingernails. She might have grown up to be a doctor, a scientist, a mother, but now nobody will ever know. Have you any conception of what abortion is all about? all the way to Chicago to get an abortion. And we talked about it, and she told me how she slept with a man, she didn't know much about him, and she felt like she couldn't have a child with him. So it kind of upset me because of a bad decision she made, a life is taken. So it was just a passion to me, and it was also like, that child could have changed the world for the better, but we don't never know. All right, so some history about abortion. It was legal, but then it became illegal in 1880. And then, at that time, women felt that they were taking their rights away to make their own decision. So at the moment of time, women were housemaids, but they wanted to do more than just be housemaids. They wanted to actually do what men were doing. So they started to join groups together, and they had like underground areas and basements and attics. And like in one underground area, if you knock on the door three times and you say Jane, they knew you was there for abortion. So it was like they already had this together. And doctors, they still had to practice abortion just in case of emergency reasons. Like, if the woman can die and the child can die, they'll birth the child first. But in January 22, 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in a woman's favor. And it was that they felt that women should have the decision on what they should do with their body. But since it became legal again, it cost money, which was a thousand plus dollars, and they had to pay in cash. So since Really, don't nobody had a thousand some dollars in cash. So because of that, women had to do hanger abortion. Got hanger for you. So they used the tip of the hanger and they would thrust it up their vagina and they would just hope that they catch the child. But it really, you really can't tell because you have to look down there. So you really can't thrust a hanger down there and not be able to see what you're doing. So because of that. Lots of women became, they got diseases and also their internal organs were damaged because of that. So women actually were supposed to go to the doctor if something like that happened, but since they don't have money and cash to do that, they were not able to. So, this is a 23 week old fetus. So from vocabulary, a 23 week old is actually like five months and a half. So this is actually a late abortion to have. And also a fetus, is a human embryo from the end of the second month of pregnancy until birth. So since this abortion is very uncommon, they have to start by getting the legs first and the arm. Because when they do that, that is how you know. Because if the legs and arms are left within the woman's stomach, it can damage her internal organs because you still have a human flesh inside. So they have to get the arms and the legs, and then they go and get the body, and then they grab the head to make sure it's all cleaned out. And this is the actual way it's supposed to be done, and the professional way to make sure it's all clean. All right, so I came to a difficult situation when I thought about abortion, because I'm really against it. But I had went and read articles, and it was this woman that actually made an article, and she was great. And she felt that she should be able to get the abortion, and she cannot be able to have the child. And then I kind of didn't agree to it, because I was just like, it's wrong, but I thought about it. A woman shouldn't have to carry something that will remind her of something bad that happened to her. So it's just like, if she cannot handle that hard situation or just handle having a child in general by a person that raped her, she shouldn't be able to have to keep it and be distraught. Because the child mother can go into depression, she can kill herself, and then that child be motherless and fatherless. So I feel like in that difficult situation, if the woman was raped, then I do understand that she would want to get an abortion because she wouldn't want to go through all that problem. I got a lot of statistics, but 
But the main one that really got to me was black women are five times more likely to abort than white women. So at first, I was just like, okay, like what do they mean by that? So I read on with the article, and it told me that black women are dependent on the government to pay for the amount of kids that they have. So I said, they're like, wait, what does that have to do with anything? But come to find out the government is giving out less money to women to take care of their children. So because of that, black females feel that they need to get abortions because they can't support the child. And then when it comes to white women, they feel like white women already have the money and support they need to take care of a child. So that was just kind of shocking to me. And then also, only 17 states fund abortions. So that also was kind of very shocking, as we know. And this is just the unintended pregnancy. So it was 47% that give birth, and 40% that aborted, and 30% miscarriage. And even though 47% and 40%, 47 is bigger, but that's still a 7% difference. So it's just like, yes, people are giving birth, but it's others that just aborting the child, not caring about it. So the bad things that happen after abortion, you can have heavy bleeding, infections, incomplete abortions if it's done wrong at the wrong place perforation of the uterus, damage of maternal organs, infertility, which is if you have so many abortions, you can't have kids anymore because you are hurting your organs. And then pelvic inflammatory diseases, which also you can't have kids anymore. And it's in the fetal body, so if there's something left in the body, which I talked about the arms or the legs, that can damage the person. So my solution, my how question, I came up with, how can we incorporate sexual education classes to reduce teen pregnancy rates? And yes, I know y'all probably tell me, Rochelle, we already have sex ed in school, but they're not actually, how can I say? They're not actually improved. Like they telling people have sex just a condom. Like they don't tell about what can happen if you don't have sex, what can happen if this and that. Like they don't talk about all the diseases and new diseases that they found. So I feel like we should, like the government should get more money into the schools instead of other things that are unnecessary and help our young students understand life. And also, when it comes to my solution, I feel that parents should also get information classes on sex ed because if most parents out there that just tell their children be abstinent, but we're teenagers, if you want to have sex, you're going to have sex. And if you're going to have sex, I'd rather you go out there and know what you're doing. So it's just if parents know what to tell their children and then children know what to do, then it'll be easier for everybody to know how to have safe sex. And it'll also help the abortion rate stay decreasing, because it is decreasing, but not by a significant number.